We've got retired Colonel Marilee Madero in the house, and uh, she was the, amen, <laughs> vice wing commander at Goodfellow Air Force Base, and uh, has, has uh, now she's done a lot of impact throughout the world just in the military career, and I forget how many hundreds of jumps out of air, perfectly good airplanes. 670. 671. One. She's got <laughs> And uh, so, uh, but now she travels the world and preaches the gospel and does ministry, and we feel so honored. She was a vital part of our church when she was stationed here, and we're grateful for that. Relationships, you've heard me say over and over again, that we don't arrive, I believe, at any place in our destiny in God apart from the divine relationships that God gives us. So give a good, warm welcome as Merrily brings the word today. And we, amen. The significance, I almost forgot it again. Thank God for the rain. There is a blessing <laughs> that comes from the rain and the word of the Lord today. Amen? All right. All right, I was telling Pastor Daniel last night that I saw the weather report about a week ago, and it said sunny and 96. And I'm like, Lord, I can't deal with that. Can you bring some clouds and rain? And so I just want to give God glory for honoring that request. Um, you know, I... I I travel around to a lot of churches, and I just want to do a shout out to your worship team. You guys are awesome. You rock. You bring the Holy Spirit. I, I tell you what, I was at a church last weekend that had double the size of the band that didn't bring it like you guys did. So right on, right on. Uh, so again, it's such an honor and a blessing to be back. Thank you, Pastor Walt and Joanne, for honoring me. Um, any pastor that opens up their pulpit to me, I take seriously. I also want to say thank you, uh, if I can get this right, um, you guys support my ministry. And so I want to take a few minutes here and kind of walk you through a little bit about uh, what I've been doing, especially the last two years since I've been here. So, But I couldn't do the work that I do uh, really without the, the support that you guys give me. So again, I don't have the typical ministry background. I did 30 years in the military, uh, two years here. Um, it was really a prophetic word for me to go back. You know, here I'm the base commander in the United Arab Emirates. That was about a third of the people that worked for me. And, and God sent me back there to minister. And so twice I've been able to go back to the UAE and preach there, bring God's word. And so um, I appreciate that. So after 30 years in the military, the Lord said, it's time for you to go. He gave me a very broad mission, preach, teach, and serve around the world. And so I have to stay very obedient to go where he sends me. Just to kind of show you where I've been in just the last two years since I was here last, um, there's a map of all the places that I've traveled. You can see I'm pretty much focused on Asia and all those countries in Asia, I've been there twice since I've been here. So I tend to uh, get, a, get around. So um, sorry you weren't able to uh, uh, meet my husband, Joel. He is uh, French-Canadian. And so he's watching online. Hi, Joel. He's a very big supporter of my ministry. Um, I get to be a proud mom this morning. Uh, some of you may remember my daughter, Leah. She's now a medical doctor in the middle of a six-year residency program in New York City where she'll be an emergency room doctor, internal medicine doctor, and critical care specialist. So very, very proud. Her and I still like to do some adventure trips. Um, my husband has two wonderful kids. You know, his daughter is in the Canadian military. She just got back from a deployment, and, uh, you know, it's just close to my heart. I actually gave her some of my old combat boots. And uh, his son is in the University for Mechanical Engineering, and that's what I got my degree in as well. So I have a great connection with uh, his kids as well. So, again, the Lord's given me a, a couple books. Maybe I didn't do that right yet. So last time I was here, I did preach on my Tooth About Consequences book. Uh, you'll see it's the funny book next to it. That book has been translated into Urdu, which is the official language of Pakistan. I'll talk more about that in a minute. And then the Kingdom Chronicles book is a collaboration book, and I'll actually be uh, preaching on that book uh, today. So a little bit about where I go. I do a lot of work um, here in, in the U.S., kind of in the summertime. <laughs> 
kind of have homes everywhere. Um, I summer in Michigan, that's my official residence. I, I uh, credentialed, uh, ordained out of Michigan, um, so I preach there in the summer. Um, do some work in Colorado, happy to be back here in Texas. I've done some leadership training in New Jersey and you know, Quebec is a French-speaking province. Quebec City is pretty much all French. And so praise the Lord that we found a, the only English-French uh, church is Pentecostal. And so I've been able to preach there several times. And so I preach in English, though. I haven't learned enough French yet. <clears throat> so I go to Singapore every year in Malaysia. I teach at a school of leadership program that a Bible school runs. Um, one of my mentors lives there. I do a lot of work with some other Asian uh, women ladies there and uh, preach at some churches. So I'll be going back there again in August. Uh, Vietnam, again, uh, I've done quite a few trips there as well. It was a blessing this year uh, that my husband was able to join me and teach IT stuff at some of the universities. So uh, we go there and share our faith. Uh, we teach at actually uh, Vietnamese universities, public universities, uh, but it's a great chance to be a mentor and a role model to the students and especially the women there. So I did my second trip to Pakistan in January and February. And um, uh, there, you don't hear this on TV. There is a revival going on there in Pakistan. A um, lot of big people coming together to hear the word of Christ, but the Lord said... You don't need to stand in front of 50,000 people and preach. I want you to teach and train the leaders and the pastors. So that's what the Lord sent me there to do, though. I didn't miss an opportunity to do some other things, really kingdom-level work. I'm going to show you some pictures of these, salvations, healings. Um, so let me kind of walk through uh, some of the stuff that we did. So leadership training for over 2,300 pastors and leaders. And again, I couldn't do this work without your support because one, to go there is expensive. Two, no, there's a lot of small churches, but nowhere to, is there a church big enough to hold like 500 pastors and leaders. So we have to rent facilities, rent security, provide food, sometimes provide transportation to bring all these pastors and leaders together. So this trip, we actually did five leadership conferences in five different cities, and we're really able to bless the, the pastors and leaders and and again, um, the people in Karachi wanted to say a special thanks to you guys for uh, making that all happen. So here's a, a message from the lead uh, Pentecostal bishop in Pakistan. He recorded this and asked me to play this to you. Bishop Dr. Naim Bishra, the Pentecostal bishop of Pakistan. So I'm very much thankful for this book. It is so wonderful. We have given each copy to our Bible students. Uh, we have five Bible colleges. And when we especially teach them the doctrine of sin, we give them this book as a supplementary book to learn more about sin and its consequences and how Jesus has saved us and given us new life. So we are thankful uh, for providing this book to us and to the students and to this nation. So God bless all of you. Thank you. So he asked me to share this at the places that I went. So here we go. <laughs> That's just a sample of some of the places where we gave away books and impacted lives. And that was just this year. So 3,500 books we've given away uh, free to pastors and leaders, Bible school students in the last two years uh, that we've done trips here. Uh, love to preach. So you can see every time I had an opportunity to stand up and preach, I was able to do that. And we had over 500 salvations just from some preaching messages to some of the churches. And yes, I'm wearing local clothes. Okay, so it's a sign of respect. A sign of respect when we dress as, as they dress. I'm not constrained to just teach women. Uh, you'll see I, I teach a lot of men as, as well. But we like to honor their culture and wear the same kind of clothes. And, and honestly, it's super fun for me to dress up like that. <laughs> so, again, we were focusing on kingdom work this time. So praying for people that were sick. You know, shortly before the trip, I, I broke my wrist pretty badly. Uh, and, um, you know, was in a lot of pain. And it was interesting that the first person I prayed for was a man who had just broke his wrist. And um, he was in severe pain, and by the time we finished praying for him, he no longer had pain in that wrist. So praise God for, for that. Um, 
lot of, lot of poor families there. And so we would go out, feed villages, give them a month worth of supplies, pray for people, give school supplies for villages that don't have any access. We were giving them solar audio Bibles that they could use to hear the word of God in not only Urdu, but the local tribal languages as well. So again, thanks to you for making this work, kingdom work, possible. So here's something else that we did this time. Um, in Pakistan, uh, to give you an example, when you go in the hospital, you're not allowed to leave the hospital until you pay the bill. And so that can be very expensive. And uh, the longer you stay, the more the bill is. So they take out, these families take out loans. Can't go to a bank and get a loan. You go to someone who's got money, which is normally somebody who owns big brick-making factories. So you go, you move there, your family, you're being paid pennies a day, and you can't ever really work out that debt. And so I'm working with an organization that's going in to free families. So you see up here, there's a picture of the brick-making factory. That's me paying money to the Brooklyn owner to pay off the debt. Okay, you can see the thumbprint of the man saying, my debt is free. And then you'll see that family over there on that right corner. That's everything that they had after living there for 19 years. So we packed them up. We put them in this little cart, and we, they were able to drive away. We set them up with a new residence, and we set them up with some sort of job that they could make income for their family. So we were able to rescue five, uh, four families uh, while I was there. You can see me, and a lot of these are my ministry partner. Um, one of these families here was fourth generation. Fourth generation, born and having to work in the slave yards and we were able to free them and help them start a new life so if you're interested in supporting that you can talk to people out at the table so again i, I ask for your prayers always you know i have a lot of ministry coming up i have more overseas trips coming up um you know the benefit about being retired military is i don't draw a salary everything that goes into the ministry goes out I don't keep any of that for myself. So when you give, when you buy stuff on the merchandise table, that just allows me to go more places and do more things. So, and please, again, keep me in my, my ministry and my prayers. I'm going back to uh, Asia. I'm going back to Singapore, Malaysia, Vietnam. Um, there may be some opportunities maybe to go back to the Philippines and Mongolia. So uh, please uh, pray about that. So with that... Um, just allow me to open us in prayer here for a minute. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you. I thank you for my mom and her impact on my life. I thank you that I get to be a mom. So I just lift up every mom here, that you be with them, encourage them, and strengthen them. I pray for all the mom wannabes. I want to pray for the spiritual moms. You may not have any physical kids, but you have a role in being a mentor and a guide to others more than you ever know. So, Father God, use me today to bring forth your message, use your words in your way, and I do this only for your glory and your holy name. Amen. And so, um, <clears throat> the Kingdom Chronicles book, uh, 14 of us uh, women ministers uh, got together to write a book of stories, write a book of teachings, and we decided to call the Kingdom Chronicles Tales of Guts, Glory, and Spiritual Authority. And so this was a work of love by many of us. Um, you know, most of us have a ministry focus on the kingdom. Um, you know, my chapter, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. It's kind of about the mystery of the open door, which we'll talk about in a minute. But before we go into that, I want to make sure you have a really good understanding of what the kingdom of God is. We hear that a lot, right? I hear it a lot, especially in my circles. It's really big. But do you really know what it is? Have you ever really heard it defined? I just felt like the Lord wanted me to do that. So there's a natural kingdom, right? A natural kingdom is things that we can touch, we can feel. It's part of the natural world. But there's really two spiritual kingdoms kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Satan. Guess what? You're either in one or the other. You can't have a foot in both. Can't have a foot in both. 
So we can't see them. We can't see these kingdoms, but we know they're very real. Right? We are all made up of body, soul, and spirit. You know, and our body and our soul is here in this physical world, but our spirit is either in the kingdom of God or it's in the kingdom of Satan. So the kingdom of God is often called the kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven in the Bible and then the kingdom of Satan, right? He still has a lot of authority here on this earth, but it's mostly the authority that you give him. You can't do both. So what is the kingdom of God in the earth? Well, Jesus talks about it, right? One of his first messages, Jesus says, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns because that is why I was sent. It's pretty clear. But let's define it a little bit further, right? What is? Who's in the kingdom of God, right? Well, we know it's God the Father. We know it's the Son. We know it's the Holy Spirit. We know it's the spiritual being, some of the angels, some of those that we can't really understand. But it's also the people who live in righteous obedience to God's word. That's you, right? If not, we're going to talk about that later. (laughs) Okay, next, kingdom of Satan. Who's in the kingdom of Satan? Well, obviously, Satan. Spiritual beings called demons. And all people who live in sin, who live in rebellion to God's word. So there's a struggle, right? We can't physically see it. But we can sometimes physically feel it. It's a constant battle between the two kingdoms. That's spiritual warfare. If you haven't understood that, it's the kingdom of God against the kingdom of the enemy. We battle that every day. But you know what? Jesus overcame Satan. (laughs) Before his ministry began, and, you know, he has a lot to warn us about. What does Jesus say? Who is Satan? Well, he comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So Jesus acknowledges Satan, but he makes it very clear that he is the way. He is the way to the Father. He is the way to heaven. So really, Jesus had one main focus. He wanted us to understand and embrace God's kingdom. You know, Jesus also went on to say... You know, and again, this was in his first sermon. The time promised by God has come to last. The kingdom of God is near. We need to repent of our sins and believe the good news. So the kingdom of God did not arrive until Jesus arrived. And you know, the kingdom of God was Jesus' main focus because that's where he wanted everybody to come into. So to help you understand a bit more about the kingdom of God, here are some things I want you to know and understand. So the kingdom of God, it's not mentioned in the Old Testament. You never see those words written. Though its foundations were laid. But you know what? Those phrases, kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, were used over 100 times in the four gospels. So what else? It was Jesus' greatest concern. When you really study his sermons, when you study his parables, that was the focus. Every miracle Jesus performed was a demonstration of the kingdom of God in action, right? So next, Jesus tells us in Matthew 6, 33, to seek first the kingdom and then pray about it and then preach about it. So what is the kingdom of God? It is the true church, Right, which God established to send the gospel to the nations of the world. That's our mission, right? Some of us are called to go. Some of us are called to pray. Some of us are called to give. But it's all to go and spread the gospel. So the kingdom is present wherever people love God, have been born into the kingdom, have given their lives to Christ, have adopted kingdom principles in their lifestyle, and acknowledge, first and foremost, the reign of Jesus Christ as Lord and King. So why is it so important? Well, Jesus tells us kind of at the end of his reign, and this gospel of the kingdom must be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. So Jesus isn't going to return until his kingdom is known throughout the world all the nations of the world. 
So I hope you have a little bit better understanding of what spiritual kingdom is. So let me ask you a question. All right. Is every open door from the Lord? What do you think? Every open door from the Lord? You know, I don't think so. You know, Peter warns us. <laughs> we need to be alert and of sober mind because our enemy, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. You know, I wrote this chapter in this book because I'd hear Christians say, oh, if that door opens, I know it's from God. Really? You know, Satan can open some doors too. <laughs> you know, I had a good example. Let me give you a quick story here. Um, after I left here, I went to, to San Antonio. I had a great job there, but I knew it was time to move on. And I get this call on a Monday morning saying, Merrily, this job just came open and you need to apply for it. It's a SES, general officer position. You would be perfect for it. And so in my mind, I'm like, oh my gosh, I could stay in San Antonio. I was teaching at a Bible school. I was going to a great church. I'd have more money for the kingdom. So I spent all week working on the super long application and submitted it by the deadline on Friday. And I went to church on Sunday, and the pastor preached about the mystery of the open door. And I was so convicted because I didn't ask the Lord about that. So, man, I went to my prayer closet and prayed about that. And this is what the Lord said to me. Merely, that's an acceptable path. You won't be sinning. You could go do that. You could provide more for my kingdom. You could continue to teach at the Bible college. But that is not my perfect path for you. I have a perfect path for you. And you could do this acceptable path, but it would take you longer to get where I want you to be. You want to be on God's perfect path, right? Not just the acceptable ones. I could have taken that job. I wouldn't have been sinning. But then I probably wouldn't be standing up here today either. So, so how do we make sure that doesn't happen to us? How do we make sure? Well, what's the first step? We need to ask. You know, I love Smith Wigglesworth. It's one of my favorite quotes from him. God is more eager to answer than we are to ask. Right? Why? Because sometimes we don't take the time. You know, we're busy. We make the wrong assumptions like me thinking I was doing the right thing. Sometimes maybe we don't want to ask because we don't want to know the answer. So Jesus makes us very clear to us in Luke chapter 11. And he says to us, and so I tell you, keep on asking, and then you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And everyone who knocks, the doors will be open. Does this message say, just ask once? No. It says, keep on. Keep on asking. Seek once? No, we need to keep on seeking. And then what happens? Then we receive. Then the Lord opens the right door at the right time. You know, sometimes we know we have a calling or a task, but we have to wait on his timing. You know, it's interesting. You know, I went on a Smith, uh, trip with John Smithwick. I went to the Philippines. It was awesome. It was Thanksgiving week. It was a good time for me to be gone while I was still in the military. And the next year, he was going to Nepal for the first time. Oh, man, I had desire in my heart to go to Nepal. But every time the deadline came up, you know, I didn't hear anything. So, again, I, I went to the Lord. I'm like, Lord, it doesn't make sense. I should be able to go. It's Thanksgiving week. And the Lord said, this is not your time to go. You know, you need to wait, and I will send you at another time when it would be better. And praise God, I listened. Because a huge emergency happened at work during that time, and I would have had to cancel at the last minute. So God knew. And you know, I got to go again with Hand of Hope and uh, go there with a the medical team, and it was a blessing. I still have friends from that trip. So I had to wait on his timing. He wanted me to go, but not necessarily when I wanted to go. I had to wait on his timing. So you may say, Merrily, well, how do I ask? What do you mean, ask God? Well, you know, Jesus gives us a pretty good example, right, with the Lord's Prayer. And I know sometimes we repeat that 
and we say it, but we, do we really incorporate that into our prayers? I mean, this really gives us a model of how we should pray, right? We, we start off praising him. I always start out praising God. Why? Well, he's worthy of our praise, right? Even when he doesn't do what we want him to do. But we praise him even in the midst of our difficult circumstances. We ask for forgiveness of our sins. Why? Because once we ask for forgiveness, he forgives it. He remembers no more. And then we are free to ask. And we lay out our prayer requests. And then we end our prayers by asking God to reign in our lives. That his will needs to be done. Not necessarily our will and our timing. Okay, so we ask. I've given you the model. You know what the next thing is we need to do? We need to listen. <laughs> right? Jesus makes it clear to us. Anyone with ears must listen to what the Spirit is saying and understand. I know some of you are saying, you know, well, how do I know if I'm hearing from the Holy Spirit? A lot of you do, but let me give you some help. So how do we listen? You know, everyone hears in different ways, right? Some people hear from the Lord through scripture. Some people hear in, in worship. You know, my husband is a worshiper. He's got worship music on all the time. And boy, the Lord really speaks to him. For me, I need quiet. <laughs> I need to be in a quiet place. You know, I read my word. You know, I pray in the spirit. And boy, that's when the Lord talks to me. Does he talk to me so much when I don't do that? Well, sometimes he'll, he may, he's only yelled at me once, but uh, I'll save that story for another time. But what is the place that you hear from God? It may not be the same as your spouse, your friends, your neighbors. You need to find that still quiet voice. If you're not hearing it right now, do something new. And the Lord wants to speak to you. So we need to understand that sometimes the answer may be no <laughs> or not now. And I know so oftentimes the people that don't hear aren't willing to accept that as an answer. But we need to be open to that, that the Lord is saying, no, you can't have that $100,000 boat. <laughs> it's not in my will, okay? <laughs> or not now, not now. So... When you ask in line with the word, he's going to answer in line with the word. Okay. So what does Jesus tell us? I am the good shepherd. We know that. His sheep hear his voice. We need to make sure we're the sheep and that we are listening to his voice. Because when we hear his voice and we follow him, boy, we have a great reward, eternal reward. So oftentimes people say, well, Marilee, how do I really know? How do I really know if what I'm hearing is from the Lord? Because there are some different voices that come in our head. So let me give you some examples, all right? Here are some different voices. There are three voices that could be talking to us. First, God's voice. It's biblical. The Lord is never going to tell you to do something that's outside of his word. The Lord's not going to say, well, it's okay to cheat on your taxes or it's okay to take those pens from work. It's going to be in line with biblical principles. So if you're hearing something that doesn't line up with the word of God, it is not God. Okay? It's probably Satan. Right? Because sometimes he gives us just enough truth to deceive us. But his bottom line are, are lies and deceptions. Don't let him lead you astray. And then often people don't realize there's our own voice. <laughs> right? Normally self-centered. <laughs> It's full of a little bit of pride. It's our desires, our comforts. We need to listen to make sure it's not just our voice that's speaking as well. So there's, can I stand up here and say I've always listened to God's voice? No, I've made some mistakes because the Holy Spirit tried to correct me, but I was like, well, God, you don't understand. You know, I need to go into this business deal with my family or it's going to look bad. Did it turn out bad for me? Yes. So when the Holy Spirit is trying to tell me something, I have learned to be obedient. So try not to learn those hard lessons because there are consequences. If you have any questions about that, you can get my Truth About Consequences book. Okay. okay, so we ask, we listen. What's the next step? Probably the most important.
important step. Gosh, we need to obey. <laughs> obey. Jesus tells us if we love him, we must obey his commandments. Right? He's going to speak to us through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to guide us. And guess what? Maybe your neighbor may disagree with you because he doesn't understand the Holy Spirit. People not filled with the Holy Spirit aren't always going to understand. So get them saved first, and then you can explain to them what the Holy Spirit's trying to say to you. You don't want to tell you that when you do obey, blessings, blessings will come. Why? Well, the Word tells us that, right? Some of my favorite um, verses here. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord's plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. If you seek me and, and find me, you seek me with all of your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. I love these verses and the promises that they give to us. Here's some more good words from Proverbs that we should be very familiar with. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, like our own way. <laughs> our own will, right? In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. I tell you, in my ministry these days, you know, at, at first when I would get an invite, oh, I'd be so excited, immediately say yes. Now the Holy Spirit says, you need to come to me. You need to come to me and be discerning about what you say yes to and what you go. Because I'm one of those people, you know, Daniel asked me last night at dinner, when do you rest? I have a little bit of a hard time with that. <laughs> Why? Mostly because I'm operating in my calling and my giftings. And so I tend not to get tired. I'm sure Pastor Walt's like that too. But we still need time for that as well. But I want to stay in God's perfect will. I want to be obedient to him and then my ministry prospers. So here's another quote from my favorite guy, Smith Wigglesworth. If you seek nothing but the will of God, he will always put you at the right place and at the right time. So when we ask, listen, and obey, we are operating in the kingdom of God here in this earth. And again, there is a reward for us. How do we know? Well, Jesus tells us, right? When the Son of Man comes in glory and all the angels with him, and he will sit upon his glorious throne, and the nations will gather around him. And what is he going to do? He's going to separate the sheep from the goats. We want to be the sheep. We don't want to be the goats. And then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of this world. We are Jesus' sheep, and we want to live in his kingdom. We seek him, we ask him, we listen and obey. I know like Pastor Walt said earlier, some of you, you may be here with your, with your mom, your grandmother, your wife. There's a different reason you're being here. You're here because the Lord is calling out to you to come, to come to him, to no longer be a goat, to be a sheep, to listen to his voice, to get out of the kingdom of Satan and step into the kingdom of God. So I ask everybody, close your eyes and bow your heads. And you believers, I want you to pray. Those of you who say, I, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm in the kingdom of God. I'm telling you, today's the day. And all I'm gonna ask you to do is stand. Nobody's looking. Just stand to your feet and let me pray with you this morning because Jesus is calling out to you. Jesus wants you to come home. Maybe it's been a while since you have really followed Jesus. But he's saying, come home. Come home today. So I want to also ask, is there anybody here that, that feels like you haven't been walking like you should? Maybe you've been asking, but you haven't been listening. You haven't been obeying the word of God like you know you should. And again, I'm asking you to take a stand today and say, I want to change. I want to follow Jesus and know that the Lord is recognizing you for what you're doing. Anybody else? 
This is Jesus calling out to you, come back to me. Come home to me. I want you in my kingdom. I need you in my kingdom because I have things I need you to do. So, Father God, let's pray for all of these. So I ask you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Everybody, please pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you love us. We thank you that you forgive our sins when we ask them. So Jesus, forgive my sins today. Jesus, I want to return to you. Jesus, I want to serve you. Jesus, I want to spend eternity in your kingdom. So help me to be better to ask. Help me to listen better. And help me to be obedient to obey your word. And I pray all these things in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, that there's a whole church here who's going to support me in this. And we pray all these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen.